recording. We're recording. Okay. So once again, hello everybody. I'm Stephanie Abbey. Um, I am a high school art teacher in Jamaica, Queens, New York. I've been teaching for, this is going to be my 18th year going in. Um, and as I mentioned to you while we were waiting, I kind of started this group because I was inspired by another one that I was invited into and I got jealous and I thought New York City needed the same kind of camaraderie and um, I'm discovering that there are people all over the country who need the same kind of a, a safe place to make art and, and just have fun together and share ideas. So welcome everybody. Um, the only thing I, I ask, as I said, I'm going to record this and I would love to have everybody's email. If uh, you can send it to me, I will hold up my, my uh, email address again for everybody to send it to. If you want to just take a quick picture of it or write it down. Or I don't know if you can put it in the messages here. Um, also, let me know when you send me the email where you're from and how you found us. And that would be really, really helpful. Let me know when I'm good to put this down. Everybody good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so the first project I'm going to do is the one that got me hooked on this whole art group thing to begin with. It's called Neurographic Drawing. And if you really, really want to get into the nuts and bolts of it, there's so much stuff online about it. It started with someone in a woman in Russia who um, dives into the, the drawing through tapping into your self conscious and accessing the energy within. And I, I, you know, while that's all really exciting, I didn't need to go into all of that in order to just enjoy this process because I find it um, extremely relaxing and like everything melts away when I do this exercise. And I think um, my mother is a witness to uh, the addictiveness of this whole entire process. She has been doing them nonstop and, Uh-oh, you froze. Oh, Stephanie, you froze. Laura Rappard, my computer just said that you're the host. No, I'm not. It shouldn't. Well, I... when, when Stephanie comes back in, you might have to um, admit her. Oh. Because it said you're, okay, yes. Stephanie's back. There we go. Okay. She's on mute. Yeah, un unmute. Unmute. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> Bear with me, I'm so sorry, that's really embarrassing. Um, okay, note to self, I may have to sit closer to the Wi-Fi in the next meeting. So if it happens again, just bear with me and I'll be back. Um, okay, so as I was saying, it's a simple start up. All you need is your white, white drawing paper and a regular Sharpie with the, not the fine, fine point, okay? And a thin black marker as well. I like to use the, the Micron pens. 
and depending on the point size you like, it doesn't matter. All right. I am going to, does anybody have any questions before I start? And then I'm going to switch the view to my tabletop so you can see what I'm doing. Everybody good? Okay, I'm going to switch the view. And I'm just going to spotlight my video so I can see what you see. There we go. So everybody's view is nice and straight. I'm not crooked. I know that bothers some people. Okay, so here's my white paper. And the premise is you're going to take your marker basically on a subconscious walk around the paper. And the only rule you have to follow in this is that there are no straight lines and no corners, okay? And when you overlap, the more you overlap, the more shapes that you will have to work with. Um, as you see, anywhere that there was an intersection, the corners were rounded out. And that's what I'm gonna show you how to do. The rest of it is easy. You'll, you'll color in your shapes. And this one, I kind of did a mashup with Zentangles. I'm sure some of you are familiar with that. Um, so the first thing you have to do is to just get your lines and your outlines done. So I'm going to just start anywhere and take my marker for a walk on the paper. And again, the more that you intersect, the more shapes you will make with your intersecting lines. And you don't want to get too busy unless you want a lot of different shapes. Um, and I'm just going to start out with this. And this kind of hole is bothering me, so. All right. Now. Let's say that you like your, this drawing and we want to go in now and everywhere that two lines intersect, let's see, you see this area right here where the two lines are crisscrossing, you want to round out the intersection and get rid of any sharp corners. That in itself, where you go through your whole paper and look for it, is actually very relaxing. So you would go through, find all your intersections, and curve them out and round them out. Excuse me, should we be doing that with a thin marker? Um, yeah, well, you can use both. I like to use the thinner marker for the rounding because sometimes you... Oh, you froze again? Oh, no. I use a thick marker as well when it's a larger one, but when you use the thick marker, it tends to make the space, you know, get a little bit smaller. That's why I think she said the thin. I'm addicted to this as well. I've been doing this for a couple days now. That's exactly what's brought me to the group because that's all I hear is how addicting it is. And if, if we can addict our kids to art this easily, <laughs> that's what I'm going for. Okay. Oh dear, oh dear, Jennifer, you're. I'm in Virginia Beach. Oh, now you're host. <laughs> I am not. Oh no, it must be whoever talked first. What do you think? 
It was either Laura or um It's okay. <laughs> I feel like the invisible woman. Um all right, so um, did anybody ask a question that I missed? Something about the line weights? Okay. So that's all, all we do to get it started. And it could be as simple as you like or as complex as you like. Whatever your subconscious is telling you, just go with it. I find this part the most therapeutic and the most relaxing. I think Roberta, my mom likes this part the same also because she's been showing me so many line drawings that she's done of these. I have about 25 of them. <laughs> Not colored yet. <laughs> So you have a lot of work to do to color. Yes. And all the ladies that I was teaching today, one lady walked in, she walked by and she looked at what we were doing and asked about it and I explained it and she said, can I? And she just sat down, do you have paper and a marker? She said, and she went right ahead and, and did one. That's great. How many of you have done this before? I did something similar to this with my students. Oh, um, really? Did yeah. they like it? They actually really liked it. And it was based off that woman, the one from Russia. Uh-huh. You know, put your, um, which was really great for mindfulness, because I started it more with like a mindful, like start with a circle and put your, you know, like, lightly write your worries in it and then your support system and grow like a tree and it, it was the kids loved it they really did and they got into it and what grade level do you teach um i teach eighth through twelfth oh same as me okay yeah so i i mean they just really really and and the results were amazing amazing i think i'm gonna have to try this i i started this too late when um, I discovered it during the school year, but mm -hmm. I'm definitely going to add this into my um, curriculum. I also gave them the option of a white paper with the Sharpie marker to start with, or black paper with a white um, uh, color pencil. Oh, wow. That's a really good idea, too. And how did they color over it? Uh, color pencils. The color pencils covered on the black? Black, mm-hmm. Oh, excellent. That's, a, I'm going to have to see mom. We're going to have to try a new technique now. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I think at this point also mindfulness is going to become even more important with the kids. Yeah. That's why I was like, when I saw this, I'm like, this is great. And just to even extend it a little bit more. Mm hmm. Yep, and they could also draw simple line drawings of things they love into it, or even their initials. They could draw in their initials. I just always love doodling and, and coloring in the little spaces that you make. Mm -hmm. How many of you guys are familiar with Zen Tangles also? It's amazing. If we you know, as art teachers, we've been doing this probably for years. If we came up with that name, how much money we would have made. <laughs> right, right. It's all in the name. I mean, <laughs> things we've been doing our whole entire lives, all you have to do is label it and mark it. I did Zentangles with First Creed. They and must have really liked it. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, remote learning, but um, it was fun. Right before um, the be, before we closed, I was actually doing Zentangle animals. So it's the same thing. We created animals, and then we had the Zentangles within the animal. And tenth graders was my most rambunctious group, and I particularly picked Zentangle because I said that this group needs calm. And so it was so amazing because 
I mean, plus my seventh period, they're my seventh period, my last period of the day. And, you know, of course, you know, so it's fidgety, it's the end of the day. Um, but this Zentangle animal and, and just the Zentangle, it brought them so much calm and peace. And just the ones who just did a lot of fidgeting the most, it was just the most focused work ever. And I really, really, I was really pleased with it. I bet you also what they loved the most was that it was non-objective. Yes, it was non-objective. It, it was like, they didn't um, have to draw something specific. No, they didn't. I did, you know what I did to support them is that I gave them um, lots of different Zentangle uh, patterns because there's so many different patterns and I made like a packet of patterns, you know, yeah. because you want to give them choice as well. So, and because you could easily say, yes, you can make any old pattern, but then, you know, sometimes some kids might just like, well, I'm just making the same pattern, I'm getting bored. But to um, give them more challenges, I just made a packet of so many different Zentangles that they could actually choose from. And they really, really did a great job. You know what I found also in, in the support group for the online stuff is that a lot of us teachers ended up being on the same wavelength that we en were all teaching kind of similar stuff because we wanted to give them not only a peaceful place to be or a relaxing subject to that they would hit, but also a calming influence. And I ended up one of my first projects also when we closed school was a Zentangle animal, the same oh, exact thing. Yeah. And I also gave them packets of all the tangles and mm -hmm. I said they had to use at least seven different ones and I had them practice them separately yes. first. Yes, me too. Because <laughs> I didn't want a hundred thousand X's and O's, X's and O's, <laughs> or A, B, A, B. Um, so it's funny how we are all just following the energy and it's all the same we're all feeling exactly the same mm -hmm. i think that's great you know something this would have been a wonderful project for substitute days yes i did subbing for a lot of years and i was constantly thinking up things for a one-day project this would have been great did you hear me yeah, we heard you, we heard you. Yes. <laughs> I love the idea of using this for a sub. I also um, did the Zentangles for several years now with my eighth graders, and I have them create their favorite tangle on a three by three card to turn in, uh -huh. just so the class has an example board. So they, they personalize one that they've made themselves. So there's even more choice for everyone to look at. Yeah. Instead of me making all the examples all the time or finding the ones online, they have to turn in one of their favorites that they created. That's a great idea. And I hate showing too many samples because then they'll copy one of my samples because they'll say, well, they can't think of anything else. Right. I also referred them to, to the website tanglepatterns.com and I had them use the website to research to find their own patterns. So you're kind of forcing them to navigate um, the website and find their own stuff. When I did the Zentangle lesson remotely with first grade, I put up samples and I had to write over and over again, do not copy the sample, do not copy the sample. And then <laughs> you have all these parents and the, they don't speak English as their first language and they, they point to and they say to the kid, draw that, copy that exactly. <laughs> it's hard because a lot of people don't have the, the imagination or the creativity, but you want them to at least try to come up with something a little bit different. And I put that on all the lesson instructions, do not copy the sample. <laughs> But do they listen? Because mine don't. <laughs> they didn't. No, they didn't. And I had to remind them. One of them actually had the nerve to copy and paste mine and submit my, my own to me. <laughs> Are you serious? Oh, my God. I think my favorite is when the parents do it for them and it comes out amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they, but you can't prove it. No. Unless you 
unless you know the kids, you know, prior. I think that's one of my biggest worries going into next year is that, you know, at least when we ended the year, we knew our kids, we knew what their, their capabilities were, we kind of knew their skill levels. Going into a new year, starting remotely, you don't know who you have and what they can do, and you're kind of taking it on faith, you know, and um, that's, that's worrying me. And how do you connect with the kids without, you know, physical contact or, or about seeing... four hundred kindergartners who you've never met? Oh my god! Yeah. Oh my god! Do they even sit still for your for your for your lessons? Who knows? <laughs> oh god! And we don't even know if we're going remote or not. So. I don't know yet either. I kind of have a feeling they keep telling us in New York that it's going to be half remote and well, that's half. Where I am, New York. Right. And then I have a feeling that right before we start, they're going to say, forget it. We're going completely remote. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. Um, so I don't even know how to plan. I have no idea how to plan for next year. So I'm just going to wait till like five minutes before. <laughs> Well, that's like what they're doing. <laughs> right, exactly. They wait till the last minute and then expect us to, you know, be completely organized and, you know, well, it's going to be. You know that I won't be in my room and I'll be on a cart. Oh, God. Because my room is so cart. small. That I, I was on the cart so many times. Mm hmm. Our school system. Uh, has how actually... can you do it on a cart? You would have to insist the kids have their own supplies because you can't even share the supplies. Right. Right. So no. oh. you're not going to let us share supplies anymore. Right. Well, that would be true whether you're on the cot or in your own room. No. Yeah. So I had the idea of how to get to know my students' handiwork. Just if you have the iPads, we have iPads. Uh huh. Go ahead and do the. Um, to record their work, to record them doing it, time lapse it, and have them turn in time lapse of their project being completed. So I could really see, you know, who was doing what, at least in the beginning. So I know whose hand fits which, you know, computer face. Have you, have you done that yet, or you're going to just try it? So I would do it in class, which, by the way, when we were all together, everybody behaves so well when there's recordings going on. I teach junior <laughs> high um, <laughs> and have them turn them and they love to watch, you know, their paintings come alive or their projects suddenly become a finished project in a time lapse. They would kind right. of fight over space to, you know, stay out of my area for my recording. So um, I did not do it in the spring because I already knew them. But right. I think that's all start this fall because that's, another, you know, when we see them, you know, working, you know exactly kind of who fits in which group. <laughs> And I wanted yeah. to make sure I knew, um, you know, what their handiwork looks like. So that's, that's where I'm headed, is they can just then submit that, that time-lapse video as part of their assignment in Google Classroom. I love that idea, but I live in an area that's very um, iffy with internet. Mm -hmm. And so I'm planning on having my kids put their student ID and take a picture of their work in progress with their ID all along the way. That's what I was thinking also. Oh, that's a great idea. I, student ID, how are we going to do that? Yeah. I was, I was having them take a picture with them yeah. or, you know, or their name has, they had to sign it on the front or, you know. Yeah. I definitely will have them, one of their assignments be a self-portrait from the beginning, a photo. Because like I said, we have iPads. And then I saw somebody mention, like, basically take all the photos from your class and put them on a page and mark off kind of on that assignment sheet or seating chart, basically, on paper in front of me as they contribute. That way I can always put a face with the name. That's mm -hmm. a good idea, too. Um, I just, I feel like there's so many, you know, getting to know them is a huge piece of understanding their work, right? So... I want to see their faces come to mind when I see their name. And you're right, they can't always, well, Zoom, they can't always see their faces. 
Well, with me, when I was doing, I had office hours every day, and even the kids who came to see me kept a blank screen on the video. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, you came to see me. Why can't I see you? You know, put your face on the screen so I could say hello. And they didn't want to be seen. It's, um, I don't know. It's a little frustrating. I do think there needs to be some kind of manners list of, you know, how to behave when you're on Zoom, especially when we need to hold them accountable. Are you watching something else? while you're supposed to be interacting, you know, with what's going on. We weren't allowed to be on screen with them through Zoom or anything. Oh. Everything was just put up as assignments and- Oh no, we did, well we, it was an option for us. It was like recommended it that we at least connected with them visually once a week, but it wasn't mandatory. Mm -hmm. So that's why I did my office hours and I posted the link daily and anybody who wanted to see me could come in mm -hmm. um, but if they're expecting they're expecting in the coming year actual teaching time that's all going to be different now yeah any of you guys used um, sketchbook pro with your kids no. I try I did that before we had iPads and I tried um, but we didn't have depends with it because I did you know it was really hard just to even squeeze the iPads in but to I didn't really want to enforce kids to get a, a digital pen with you know because you don't know so I mean but we did use it somewhat I, I did make them aware of this is before us being actually shut down okay I gave it to them as an option because I had so many kids that did not have a crayon or a color pencil in their house. It was kind of a wake up call for me that I didn't realize that there were kids in school who didn't have these things. Um, so I told them that they could do, you know, use a computer graphics drawing program on your an app, either on their phone or on whatever device they have as an option. Um, but not doing the work was not an option. Mm -hmm. So if they couldn't do that, and they couldn't use the um, Sketchbook Pro, then they had to color or shade with a regular black pencil. But everything had to be colored or shaded in. They didn't get a free pass because of that. So the inequity is so incredible. Yeah. Do you know what I heard a teacher did that I thought was, was incredible? You know those little libraries that people have outside of their houses? Yeah. Where they do that? Well, mm -hmm. she went and just took all kinds of art supplies and stuck it in there. And oh. any of the, you know, throughout the district. And they, kids could just go and take whatever they needed for the art. I thought that was an amazing thing. That's a great idea. I wish they had those in the areas where my kids live, but nothing would, would last inside those. <laughs> my students haven't left their house since March. Yeah. yeah. Their parents won't let them out. Yep. They are all like stir crazy. Mm -hmm. I, I, work, I work in Elmhurst. Uh -huh. oh, it's like the epicenter of Queens, where all the coronavirus cases were. Mm -hmm. I thought mine was in Far Rockaway. <laughs> and I'm, I'm in uh, not too far from uh, Huntington Station, which was another area hotspot. Yeah. Stephanie, how do I know if I'm finished? Um, well, I, I could ask you the way I ask my kids. Does it feel balanced? Um, does your page feel... Um, unified and complete. Did you hit every intersection? Um, sometimes I'd, I don't even catch all of them and I end up um, catching them as I'm coloring, you know, the intersecting lines. If you want to hold it up to the camera, I could take a look. Yeah. I find you. Oh, I love it. Let me see. Can I spotlight, can I spotlight you? Is that okay? Sure. All right, let's see. Oh, that's beautiful. 
Oh, I can't see anything. Oh, wait. Beautiful. I think you're good. Okay. So the next step now is to color and you could use anything that you're comfortable coloring with. I have done watercolors, which um, is this one. This is just a limited palette with watercolors and the salt technique. Um, I've also used magic markers. My mother is a fan of colored pencils. So whatever it is that you want to try, what's also cool, I don't know if you guys can see it on, on my sample here, I used a, um, a candle and I drew this white scallop with the candle and then I used the candle as a resist with the watercolor. So I put the dark gray over it and then the candle wax kind of resisted the, color, the paint. So it depends on how much, I love all your paintings in your background, by the way. <laughs> um, it depends on what you're comfortable you. with. If you have space for watercolor, um, you can do that. If you just want to do markers to keep it simple. When I did this one um, and this one, I used a white gel pen over the magic marker. I like to use Uniball, which is an excellent white gel pen um, to go over all of this stuff. That's so cool. yeah, it's a great marker. So whatever you're comfortable with at this point, it's kind of like whatever makes you happy. Um, the hard part is just the, doing the, the drawing first and then, and then coloring it in. That's why I love this. I so think easy. the drawing is the easy part. <laughs> well, I'm trying to see if I missed any. Did you see mine? <laughs> that is oh, beautiful. pretty. I like that you're varying. It looks like calligraphy lines. Yeah, I, I've been doing that uh, thick and thin lately, going over all the original lines. So I like how that looks. It's very ribbony. Ribbony, yes. Ribbony. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. I'm in Las Vegas, Nevada. Oh and wow! They want us to learn a whole new program. We've done Google Classroom. Now they want to. Now they want us to do Canvas. Is anybody? Oh, I have the same thing we just got this week. We're switching from Google Classroom to Canvas. Why can you do that? What's the justification? I, I have, have no idea. idea. Yeah. We, 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 when are they going to train you? Oh, supposedly Canvas two weeks before school Canva. starts. Canva or Canvas? Canvas. Canvas. Oh, there okay. are a lot of good tutorials on about Canvas. We used to use it for years. I love it. It's way better than Google Classroom. It's a lot more robust and it's it just it's it's slick. It's great. I think it's I think you'll really like it. It's a learning curve just like anything, yeah. but it's really good. I I miss it. <laughs> oh, thank you, Sarah. Well, that helps. Yeah. What, is, what does it have that Google Classroom does not? Um, well, Google Classroom is just so bare bones, I guess. Um, and I just feel like it's kind of clumsy where Canvas is laid out in modules that I think just make more sense. And you could create all these things or each module and have some things published so that the kids can't see it and the, or unpublished for that matter. Um, when So they can't see it. Sorry, reverse that. Um, and it's... I just, I just found that it's, um, you could have a lot of visuals in there. You can have links right on there rather than having to click on the separate materials. I teach middle school, so it was, it made it pretty slick. I teach high school. No, yeah, so I think you'll, I think you'll have a good experience with it. You'll, if you go on YouTube, you can find a million tutorials on it. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. They should, if they're making you do that, they should be running PDs for you guys so that you could all do it together. 
you know, with well, the rest yeah. of your faculty? Supposedly, before school starts, we're going to have some PDs. With Again, them. that's when they be waiting for the last uh, minute yeah, and then they expect you to be opening it. We still don't okay, know. So at least New York is that that waits till the last second to tell you anything <laughs> no we still don't know if we're going online fully or hybrid wow well we don't either and i keep saying yeah they, they keep telling us we're partially she froze again we lost you <laughs> hmm. Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I'm going to be doing this from the dining room so I don't keep popping in and out on you. I'm so sorry. <sighs> At least it wasn't a life or death situation. We missed you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You guys must be really enjoying this. You're quiet. It's fun. <laughs> if anybody wants to um, volunteer to run a session, um, you can let me know. Or if you have ideas or suggestions for what you'd like to do next time, I'd really like to do kind of every other week, at least until school starts, and then we can figure out from there um, how we want to do this. Mm -hmm. Is there any way that we could have, if everybody, once they finish, put it up like uh, on, I don't know, so we could all see what everybody's done? Absolutely. Um, we could probably, you know what, they would love yeah. it. We posted our work back on the Nikata website. So if you, um, or if you sent it to me, I can do a collage and then post the collage of your work on the Nikata site. That would be fun. That would be fun. What do you think? Yeah. Okay, so you guys can, you know what? You could email me your finished products um, with your info and then I'll just um, gather them into a collage program and post them. Which site you said you were going to post those to? I think she said Nikata. N Y C A T A. New, oh. York, New York City Art Teachers Association. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you. I'm in Iowa, so I wasn't familiar with that. Who's in Iowa? I, I hear voices, but I can't see oh. everybody. I have my video off. <laughs> I see, I see Jennifer, Heather, Laura, who else? If you click at the top where it looks like a tic-tac-toe board, they call it a waffle and you can go to gallery view. I'm afraid to, to click on anything because I keep losing everything. <laughs> a waffle? I'm on, a waffle. My, I'm on my phone, so I don't know. You're wearing um, like a um, tie-dye shirt? Yeah. Tie dye, yeah. And I'm what's Robin. your name? What? Robin. Robin. Hello. <laughs> Can you see me? Yeah, I see you. Um, yeah. So anyway, you go up to the top, and there's something called gallery view, and then everybody looks like they're on the Brady Bunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All I see on top is it says recording and a red dot. Mine and then all the, way, all the way on the right of that, do you see something that looks like a tic-tac-toe board or well, in my school they call it a waffle. 
Nope. On the right that hand side. That may be good. Are you on your phone, Mom? What? Roberta, are you on your I'm phone? Not, yeah, I'm on my phone. Well, that may be a different layout than what's on uh, a laptop. Yeah. I don't know. And I, I see a bunch of people here. I see names, but no faces. That means that they're well, not that video. Oh. I see. They're, they're in the witness protection program. <laughs> <laughs> Steffi, I see your arm. <laughs> oh, you want me? Well, I was trying to keep my, my drawing visible, but I could put my face back on if you want. <laughs> That sounds very funny. <laughs> yeah, mine does look like writing. The calligraphy, yeah. So we have 26 people. I'm so excited. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's a great opening day. Although I'm really embarrassed about my connection and I will do better next time. I'm so sorry. You're fine. Yeah. Personal, personal best, patience and grace. <laughs> I Tell think me, are, are we all women here tonight? I think so. But isn't that interesting? Are... What? You said, isn't that interesting? It is interesting. Where are the men? <laughs> <laughs> They're playing poker or, or, or baseball or I don't know. I mean, I know there are lots of male art teachers, but uh, they didn't turn up. Maybe when we show them our great results, they'll show up next time. Maybe. Does anyone have an idea for next time or a request? Stephanie, do you color every space or do you ever leave anything white? That's up to you. Okay. Um, this one I colored every space. And this one I left white and then I want to darken it, but I put like a drop shadow in area so that it looks, um, here's another one that I did without the patterning and I, I put a shadow. So it gave it a little depth to it. So it's kind of whatever your preference. Okay. Thank you. Yep. That should I show my fish one, the first one? Is it finished? No, but it's more advanced than it was. Let okay. me go get it. Sure. I'd like to finish it, but it's too big for me to drag along when I'm teaching the ladies. So I haven't done it. I'll be right back. <laughs> I think this is a great group for retired art teachers also, because I think they miss it. I agree. Okay. Ooh. Wow. Look at that. Oh my. Put it up a little higher, Mom. A little higher. Yeah, there you go. Can you see the whole thing? Yeah. yeah, very oh, nice. Beautiful. And that's with the color pencil. So the result uh -huh. vary. I mean, you can do anything with this. That's the beauty of it. This was my first one. <laughs> wow. And I, all I could find was this enormous drawing pad. Very inspiring. <laughs> So did anybody, and anybody do um, rolled paper sculptures with their online distance learning? Rolled paper? Rolled paper sculptures? No. No. no, I had great success with that because my kids didn't have any materials. I'd love to learn more paper? about that. 
if you want to do something like that, I can do that if you want, Stephanie. That would be great. Like rolling around a pen. Pencil, like rolling, tight, tight. rolling around a pencil, I had the kids use, believe it or not, a, I, I was showing them, I demoed it with a Costco flyer, and kids actually did it with their uh -huh. Costco flyers too, you know, just uh -huh. to tell them, you know, junk mail, I think I'm going newspaper, magazines, whatever they had, because they didn't have materials. <laughs> Did they have glue? Like what kind of what gave kind of them energy? option? They could use tape. They could use glue. They could even just not, you know, tie it if they wanted to. If it was easier, whichever, whatever they could use. Basically, I was. That sounds great. What well, grade did you do that with? Was it like paper quilling? Not like quilling, where they actually you took a pencil and you roll it from the corner and then you make two. What grade was that? Uh, my studio one class. For sculpture, we we did it for sculpture. So I need I need something like that. It was it was great because they really didn't need a lot. I mean, they had people use duct tape, packaging tape, um, masking tape, scotch tape, yeah. Elvis glue, um, glue stick, whatever they had to keep it together. How about band aids? <laughs> <laughs> you have to. I, you know, it, it was just like I was like, look around the house, find something. And they all came through with it, which was really great. And if you do it in your classroom, it's yeah. a great way to use up um, the donated paper that isn't good for drawing. Mm -hmm. it's a I had a project for using that kind of paper up too. <laughs> I had that sounds great, Patricia. So maybe we can we can talk um, afterwards and if you would be interested. Plan. Yeah, I, I just don't know what people are interested in. <laughs> Any kind of low cost sculpture would be helpful to me. I'm part time ceramics and sculpture. Yeah. And I don't know how my kids, this new group of kids are gonna do. They've never had, you know, clay except middle school. Well, they might've had clay in middle school, but uh, clay at home might be kind of challenging if we're at home. Yeah. I tried, I tried a workshop, um, but I missed the actual, the visual of it. The um, the Virginia art educators did a, a cold porcelain clay workshop where you made the your own clay. Um, and for me, it was such a mess. So I can't even imagine the kids doing this at home in a pot and ruining the parents' pots. It's just <laughs> not, yeah, yeah. That Getting it in the carpeting. Uh-huh, uh-huh. All over the counter, it's, yeah, it's just not a good idea oh we have a luke hello luke a guy i think so <laughs> <laughs> don't scare him away <laughs> welcome luke i don't know if you're in yet um, oh, I can't decide if I want to try markers or color pencils today. Try both. That's Ooh. a good idea. I'm doing markers. Can you see it? Where are you? Oh, that's pretty, Robin. That's beautiful. Thank you. Hi. Isn't this relaxing? Yeah. This so you know, Steph, I was just thinking about one of the little sculpture projects that I did in Spain. Um, the kids brought in toothpicks and garbanzos. And the, the, the uh, garbanzos had to be soaked and they made a sculpture by, by poking a garbanzo on either end of the toothpick and just building it up from there. That's right. I remember that. You do? I do. And I remember that you spray painted it gold. Yeah. And what happens to the beans when they dry? They shrink around the toothpick and it becomes a very, very solid uh, build that way. I love that idea. 
Yeah, yeah. I hate yeah. beans. That's a great way to get rid of beans. <laughs> <laughs> Would it work with any bean, you think? Like, can oh, you yeah. use the beans out of the, Do you have to use the bean? Can you use the beans out of the can? Or do you have to so actual soak beans? Uh, you know, I don't know. But when we were in Spain, garbanzos were, were everywhere, remember? So yes. I just took them overnight. I, I put a bag of them in, in a pot of water, and they were good to go. I think the ones in cans might be too soft. Yeah. And they might split in half. OK, maybe we need to do an experiment. What if we did that as one of our um, one of our night? Mm -hmm. we could do that. I even have a picture of one of them someplace. Hey, uh, would you like to lead a session, lady? Me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm retired. <laughs> Oh, so you're just here for the fun, huh? Yep. <laughs> I suppose, I mean, all I would have to do is, is show how I do it. That's all. And everybody can take it from there. Well, I might have to experiment. Chickpea sculptures. What and else? I'm trying to think of other sure. things I did. What about um, um, using different things for painting with? Anybody do anything with that? Like different materials, tea? Yeah, I, I painted with coffee. Oh, How did that work out? The coffee painting, I experimented with um, different kinds of, like um, different K-cups. Mm -hmm. Ended up using just one K-cup and I diluted a little bit here and there. But then when I would put it on the paper, I would add some more water to it, like a watercolor painting. And when it dried, I just wiped it off. Because um, sometimes the little grains would get on there. Right. I'll show you one that I did. OK. It was very fun. I liked it a lot. Oh, nope. Got to get the background out of there. Yeah, Patricia, background. You talked about, Patricia, you talked about the rolled sculpture, right? Yeah. OK. That sounds like. That looks good. If you wind it around a pencil, you do. It's kind and of fun. I used to do uh, bead making with the kids from brown paper, uh, a very long triangle of brown paper, long and thin, wound around a pencil, and then glue it together and paint them and string yeah. them. The kids loved it. Probably the exact same method for, for the sculpture. That's what I'm thinking. I did another project based on Vic Nunes, where he does portraits in like odd materials and things. And I had, uh -huh. the, kids, I had the kids either use a picture of themselves or a picture from a magazine and put, it, uh, put a glass over it, whether it's a clear glass plate or I showed them, I took a, a frame apart and used the plexi from the flat frame and they had to bring right. something on with sugar or salt or or they could try they tried three different things with their their image and they, some of them came out really interesting that i remember him with the ravioli and the ketchup yeah. porridge and yes yes yeah he does the chocolate um syrup and i had my right. a food art where they had to create something from can you food. imagine it, they really can you imagine the parents? <laughs> yeah. I had one in food art. They made the Eiffel Tower. It was gorgeous. Wow.
I have to admit, throughout this whole thing, it's been great connecting, connecting with a lot of like other art teachers from all over, and just help you know, like really, kind of collaborating <laughs> with people from like different states and everything, because it's I'm fantastic. I'm only one of two art teachers. Where there's just two of us, so we as much as we try, it, it's so hard. It's lonely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My school only has two art teachers as well, and it does get lonely. And they don't even have our rooms near each other. I'm on the third floor, she's on the first. Yeah. Same with me. I'm on the first, she's on the third. We're, we're next to each other, but we teach so many different sections of things that it's, it, it's hard sometimes. You know, she's more up the upper level, the AP, the, you know, the advanced placement stuff. And I'm basically like, kind of like, okay, we have to take this down for them to do at home. So it's been, it's been really great. And everybody, anybody who's on Facebook and shares, I, I'm going to thank you now because that's really helped me. <laughs> Is anybody going tomorrow? Um, I think there's a webinar with the NEA, National Education Association. I think it's NEA. NEA, yeah. Um, at three o'clock. NAEA? Mm -hmm. NAEA, yeah. Oh, what is it? I'm going to look. I have what, is the, what is the webinar? Um, I believe it's about going, starting back at school and feeling safe going. Oh, oh. My friend told me about it today and I signed up real quick. I'll have to look at that later. Yeah, it's now, called. Been amazing. Safely returning, safely returning for <laughs> in-person instruction. And it's tomorrow at three o'clock. You have to register, you have to register for it? Um, I, I, she sent me her link and I just clicked on it. Um, okay. And then I just walked myself through it to do it. So I'm sure if you went to the site, Thank you for recommending it. Yeah, you're welcome. I just remembered. Wonder if anybody's going to be going back to school in person anywhere. We shall see. In New Jersey, we're going back for two days. The kids will come one day, half of the kids, and then Tuesday, the other half come, and then the rest they're on online learning. So it'll be interesting. What is your so start day? Monday and Tuesday is your in-building days, and then every other, the rest, you're working from home, or you're working remotely? Uh, we don't know that yet. Um, I haven't found that out yet. They're going to have a webinar, something on Monday, my district, and the superintendent wow. okay. to us. When do you start? Um, honestly, I don't know. I think it's sometime in September. Right in the beginning, it's before Labor Day. Okay. But we haven't been told officially. Anyway. I think we all have to be ready. To I think they go back in later in August in North Carolina, don't they, Steph? They go back in, in August. I'm in California and we're starting like August 12th or something. Oh. Wow. So we'll be distance learning as far as I can tell. Yeah. It's so early. Yes, it is. And it's hot and ridiculous. But they started lining us up earlier and earlier, I believe, so that you'd have classes, uh, more classes before the AP testing starts, right? But your school year ends earlier too, doesn't it? That's right, yeah. and it's oftentimes at the end of May. Yeah, we go to the end of June in New York, so. Yeah.
Okay, so hi, I'm Haley. I showed up late, I believe. I'm from Texas, so I was thinking 7 p.m. Central Time. Uh. <laughs> um, so hello. <laughs> and what everyone's doing, if you can give me a small recap. Who, who's talking? Luke. Luke. <laughs> Luke. Kaylee Davis, I'm a teacher from Texas. <clears throat> Where's Stephanie? You can, nobody <clears throat> wants to take charge. Somebody explain. <laughs> Where's Stephanie? Did <laughs> she come back yet? No, I think she's off. Laura's the host again. Oh, no. Oh, there she's back. <laughs> oh, this, the link I put there should take you to the NEA. I'm going to click on it. There she is. Stephanie, I need to go, but um, I'm going to email you my finished project when I'm finished. She back? Just saw a part of her. All right. Well, <laughs> if you guys could tell her for me. <laughs> what do you want to tell her? I this link is to the thing for tomorrow. Yeah, it came clicked back on it. up as a bad link. Nothing came up. It on did my, I clicked on for me. Stephanie, someone came in late and asked for a quick recap. They came in late and asked for what? A, a recap. recap. Kind of like a summary. Letting know what's going on. Oh, who, who came in late? Luke. Hi, I'm Kaylee oh. Davis. I, kind of, I emailed you earlier today. I had asked on Facebook, but I don't think anybody saw. I had asked what time, uh, Central or Eastern, and then I ended up showing up at 7 Central, and <laughs> it was 7 Eastern. <laughs> oh, sorry. I think I, I did answer you back. Um, yeah, it's Eastern because we're in New York. I'm sorry. It's okay. No worries. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. Um, I keep Ooh. popping in and out because my internet is crappy. I'm so sorry. So I decided to pick myself up and leave my studio and come into my living room. So I'm closer to the Wi-Fi. Um, hopefully I won't pop out on you guys again. So Aaron, um, do you need us, do you need me to walk you through what we're doing or? I don't know. Somebody just wants to show what y'all have done and maybe the idea behind it. I don't want to like make y'all redo everything just Okay, well, I, mind, I have to leave. Hold up our artwork. Um, basically, it's a big doodle, you know, essentially. We took all um, markers and doodled all across the page. And the more you intersect your lines, the more shapes you create. And at every intersection, you round out the sharp corners so that it looks like a blob where they all intersect. Um, so that your end result is very fluid. Wow, Laura, that's like, whoa. That was earlier this week. That looks awesome. I can't stop. And can you put up your fish again? <laughs> Mom, put up your fish. Put up my fish. Put up fish. fish. Okay. I clicked on the wrong button and I missed it. I don't know. Haywood, that's beautiful. Wow. I can love you your work. Oh, that's gorgeous. Frame it. That's great. Frame it. It's beautiful. Oh, there's the fish, Mom. There it is. Very nice. A little nice. girl wants to show you hers. I'm going to finish this one. Wow. Is this watercolor over there? Like, did you do, like, droplets of... The fish colored pencil. <clears throat> well, how about the little circly things? Is that... Um, fading to white. Very, very softly fading out. Okay. Beautiful. It looks like watercolor. Jen, yeah. I love that. It looks great. Jen, I, I, I got inspired. <laughs> I love you. Inspired me. I did mine on um, recycled mayo. So there's a window in here. Uh, I was gonna say, how did you do that? <laughs> lines in it um, too, because we tried to use all the recycled anything for this whole time we've been home, and I've gotten all of these amazing envelopes with really fun patterns. I don't oh, know if y'all can see that. That's a good idea. Because yeah. that texture is already there. This is on the inside of a Discover envelope. So there's so many incredible textures that's and cool. patterns on the inside. Then it leaves that cool window to do something with. Oh, really cool. That is such a great idea. Can you turn the envelope inside out? 
Yeah, the inside of a little... lot of envelopes are textured, and I did a I did a whole value study with them during <laughs> the time that we've been home because there's anything there's some of them have words on the inside, some of them are like this one where it looks like it's cross hatched, so that That's texture really lives cool. in the background. The, the other side is you know whatever. Who's talking? Jen Mazer. Jen Mazer. Because I, I can, I can't see. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Little directions. I love it. Yeah. I gotta Luke, have notes. Do you have any have questions? Notes. Luke, do you have any questions? No, that sounds awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. And then once you round out all the intersections, it should be very fluid with no straight lines. And then you can color it any way you want. Okay. But it, with whatever you've got. So it's a, such an easy process and it's just very relaxing. Well done, Jen. <laughs> it's non threatening. Completely. I'm showing you the directions. <laughs> oh, look at that. That's so no cute. straight lines. <laughs> Take a line for a walk and yes, intersect. That was yeah. it. Yep. And then yep. you can get it. <laughs> hey, can we get PD hours for this? I need a right. certificate. <laughs> Um, no. <laughs> I just want a fun one. <laughs> we can give certificates for, um, for, for, for sensational, um, collaboration. Oh, that's a good one. How about that? Sensational collaboration time. I'm writing that down. <laughs> <laughs> that's, my pen ran out. Uh-oh. Sensational. That's awesome. Would you want to do a takeoff on this the way I was doing it with that Russian lady with more of a mindfulness in mind? How would you do that? We could. Absolutely. Because um, the way I approached it with my students was more of a mind, because that was the big word this year, you know, yeah. before we got to this pandemic was mindfulness. Right. And um, mm -hmm. so when I ran it, I actually started with breathing and closing your eyes and visual visualization and calming music and then how to kind of springboard into this like that. We could try it. So if that's something you guys want to try, I'd be willing to share that with you because that I think that's going to be a big buzz in the beginning. My Patricia, yeah. Patricia, did you um, play music for them? Very, just uh, no words, just like background, kind of calming yogurt type music. <laughs> we, I always play music in my room anyway, because I hate not having music. Me, Me too. too. Me too. Our well, buzzword is social emotional learning. That's social. everything is on social emotional balance. Mm -hmm. So this fits right in. Yeah. <laughs> so you willing to do something like that, I, I wouldn't mind doing that because, you know, it's a kind of a takeoff on this, so you mm -hmm. can incorporate both. Please do. Well, we, we could do it. Um, is every other week okay for you guys, or do you want to do every week? From how, how do you want to work this? I'm open. I'm available next week. The following week, I probably am not. Okay. Weekly is always easier for a pattern, and then if you can't make it, you can't make it. Yeah. yeah. So did, you said weekly is easier? Keep a pattern. I'm not committing to every week. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, Where it's every other year, I, I don't know if I can ever find it. <laughs> right. If we, Okay, well, if we do every week, as long as we have somebody who either wants to volunteer or we have um, a request, I have a list of projects that I, you know what? I, I have a list of projects that I could send in a mailing to you guys, mm -hmm. or if you all send me your emails, I could, with, with ideas, then I could get in touch with you and then schedule something with you. How about that? That's good. That sounds good. Now, I never, I, never use, I never use Zoom with like my classes or anything, I, but we, we have Microsoft, so it goes strictly through that. Uh -huh. So would you be like the coordinator for us and then like yes. set the Zoom link and stuff? Yeah, because what I had to do is I had to be made um, 
an admin with the president of NICADA so mm -hmm. that I could have the free, you know, the unlimited time and the unlimited people on the Zoom chat session. So I would come in as um, host and make whoever's running it as a co-host. So that, that I, yeah, so that I could um, be there to hold it down and hopefully I won't keep disappearing next time. Um, <laughs> That's really crazy. Um, so I, I know now that I, for, for, maybe it's the big group of people through it, I don't know. But um, I know I have to sit in the living room, in the dining room to do it from now on. Um, Some of the things that came up through larger Zoom sessions when um, people were lagging, we had to all take our videos off and, oh, and the mute. Like we had to go to mute and take our videos off so people, and then we had to be all in chat. So it, it wasn't the best experience, but that was one of the ways that we got around having, we had like over 300 people on. Yeah, I could see I could see doing that for like 250, 300 people. 25 people, I don't wanna look at a black screen. I wanna see you guys. <laughs> then I'll feel like I'm in the classroom talking to the wall, you know, right. and I don't wanna do that. Try hardwiring your, your machine into your internet too for, for the, when you're hosting. But sometimes oh, that, oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah, I did that for the larger groups last, last spring. Can you, you do that with a, with a USB cable or? Yeah. Uh, uh, all right. I'll have to look into that. Thank you. Yeah, you might have, if you have a newer MacBook or a newer machine, you might need some converter for your USB cable. But whatever ports you might have on whatever internet um, router situation you have, if you can hardwire it in, you're always better off. That but is a very good idea. I'm in California, and it's much earlier, and I still have one more meeting to go to. Wow. <laughs> But I greatly appreciate you guys all doing this because I also feel like I'm the only art teacher around me and it's nice to see other people. Oh, so thank you for joining us and, and definitely send me emails and I'll keep you guys on the mailing list and we'll all be in touch. Yeah, I put my email in the chat, you guys, so oh, and I'll, I'll try to keep following through. I found you on Facebook, so yeah. Thank Thanks. you. Bye, guys. Take care. Thank Bye. you so much for doing this. Yeah, thank you. This was great, Stephanie. You're welcome. So is an hour and a half about the right amount of time for you guys? Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. 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 Excellent. All right. So um, you're what? What's mom? I said it's 20 after eight already. It went well, fast. We started at seven and we're all having a great time. So. Yes, we are. <laughs> who is the person who lives near me in Huntington again? That's me. Patricia. That's me. Yay. Wait, let me find you again. Where are you? Patricia. Can you tell me if I talk? You I have strips of pictures, one on top of the other, four people at a time. Do now, where's Patricia? If, if I talk? There you me. are. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should try to meet one time. Yeah, that would be great. That would be great. I, I, like I said, I'm over, I'm not too far from the castle off of Jericho Turnpike. I've it's never been there. Oh, you're north, north of Jericho Turnpike? I'm just north of Jericho Turnpike. Yeah. If you How know, far from Route 110? Uh, not that far. You know where Umberto's Pizzeria is? No. Okay. Do you know where Pier 1 was? Yep. I'm further west. Further west. Mm -hmm. So I'm before Round Swamp Road. Um, I don't know where Round Swamp hits Jericho Turnpike. Um, um, La Palma Restaurant, Piccolo Busco Restaurant. Um, oh, Piccolo, yeah. Over yeah. there. That's, yeah, that's a little mm -hmm. further west. I'm a little bit east from there. Okay. Um... Well, we'll think about it. We'll think about a place. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. You're near Costco, right? Behind Costco. Yeah, I'm at Costco all the time. <laughs> oh, so you know Ruland Road and, and the 7-Eleven. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I know where that is. Okay, so I am down Ruland Road. Mm -hmm. And um, it's actually called, um, I can't remember the name of the street. Deshaun, D-E-S-H-O-N, Deshaun Drive. 
Okay, yeah, I think, yeah, I know what that is. Um, do you know where the, the mosque is on Deshaun Drive, the big mosque? It, Why am I, I, I'm not placing that, no. That's on, on Deshaun Drive off of Ruland. Okay, I know, I, I know where I Ruland is. the um, Newsday. Yeah, yeah. So they built this huge, enormous, gorgeous mosque, and they light it up in colors some nights. Oh. And my development is right the, right after that. Oh. It's, it's called the club at Melville. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to ask for some tech help here for a minute. How do I save the messages oh. so that I can access everybody's email from the messages? It is should, email? yeah, it, you should get it in your email. You'll get the recording and then it'll also have the chat dialogue link. It will? Yeah, well, it has for me, so I'm assuming it will for you. Okay. It's kind of a leap of faith. Yeah, I don't want to miss anybody's email addresses. Um, I'm trying to just copy and paste it and it won't do it. Do you, do you want us to send it to you in the Facebook page? Or my email, which is fine. I'm just trying to grab what's already here. Select all. Not, no, nope. It's gone again. Could you make a Google Doc and then put the link to the Google Doc in here and then we can all put our emails in there? How do I do that? We could do like a sign up for the following weeks. Like if you're going to teach next week, then you put your name down for next week and then have another date and then somebody else could put their name down and what they're teaching. How do I do that? If you walk me through it, I feel like such a, you know, an old fart here. So go in, go into your, do you have a Google account? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so go into Google Drive, and then you could make probably a Google Sheets for this. I would do Google Sheets. Google Sheets? Mm -hmm. Start a new one. It's a lot like um, Excel, isn't it? It's like Excel. Yeah. It okay, let me see. Um... Google, let me see if I can find my, uh, I'm afraid because I'm, I'm logged in under my supervisor's Google or email and I'm afraid if I leave it that I'm going to disappear from you guys. If you know how to do a survey. Um, I, could, I could possibly. Let me see if I can make it, and then if I share you as host to the Google Doc. Okay. Um, yeah. See, this is what I love. Everybody has a speciality <laughs> or can do something different or better, and that's so helpful. I'm going to buy a bag of dried garbanzos. <laughs> and see if I can replicate that project. <laughs> How fun would that be? How many years ago was that? Oh my God, 40 years. Is it 40 it's years? Over ago? 40 years, Mom, over. I can't believe it. Oh my God. <laughs> and were the toothpicks you used special in any way? They were the... Um, Regular Not wooden the flat ones, the the rounded ones with the points on the end. Okay. Not Pointy. the cheap, not the cheap school supply ones that break <laughs> when you breathe on them. Yeah. Are they what are they called? <laughs> are they called hors d'oeuvre toothpicks or something? Um, yeah, they're round and then they're tapered and pointy on each end. Yeah, so you can stab with them. Perfect. Yeah, you can stab. Perfect for middle school. Yeah, Love right. It. And high school. <laughs> right. Perfect. Well, I did it with, I forget what grade, but it might be like fifth or, by the way, ladies, if you would like to hear about an ideal art teaching situation, we were living in Barcelona, Spain, 
and Steph was a year old when we went and seven when we left or eight. Anyway, I got a job teaching at the American school and it was like um, an old estate with a, a grand staircase in, in the entry and just a very interesting building. And my art room was out in the back on a, a patio. And uh, when they hired me, they said, we have grades two to 10. We do not have any art teacher. We have not had an art teacher. We have no curriculum. Can I pause you, Mom, for a minute, please? Yes. Uh, all right. Kathleen, I'm assuming, are you, uh, okay, so you just dropped the Google spreadsheet into the chat? Yes, and uh, I gave everybody full access at this point, so that way they can all go in, they can oh, all okay. put their name and their email. Oh, that's great. So how do we save this or reuse it? Um, if you want to, if you go to, let me pull it up. Um, usually when you're in it, I, if you're, I'm, it's hard for me because it's not like it's showing as my file, but I believe that you hit um, file and then you can make a copy of it for your drive. Oh, download. Here it is. Okay. So, well, download will just kind of save it. It's kind of like saying, okay, we have a Google Sheet right now, and I want to turn it into a file that I could print, and it'll turn it into a Microsoft Excel if you have that on your computer. Oh, um, perfect. If you edit or do something while it's in Google Sheets, then it'll change. But if I think if you're doing it as a download and it's only your Excel sheet, then um, the people don't see the changes that you made to it. So if we, will this up, update and upload automatically as each of us fills it out? Yeah, so I think you'll be able to see once I put something in, I'll put my email right in real quick and see if it pops up. Yeah, I got that I had to give you, I have a view only. Yeah, me too. Yeah, you got to sign in. Um, you, uh, need, you need to open the file up as um, when you share it, uh, share it, anyone with the link can edit it. We go. Okay, so anybody can update as we go. Yep. Oh, perfect. Just be careful because we have a lot of people on right now, and so you might be going over somebody else's name. So just be careful. Oh. Oh. Okay, so somebody wrote in my name, Jennifer. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I saw somebody do that. Oh. on Thursdays? Yeah, every Thursday for sure. Um, <clears throat> I originally thought every other week, but if you'd like to keep it every week for continuity, that's fine. I think if we have enough people volunteer, it would be nice. Just to yeah, at least throughout the summer. I mean, during the school year, we'll probably need it even more, but I don't know about time constraints. Um, 
I just want to, I, again, I don't want to lose the people who typed in their information. What if I did a screenshot? Yeah, you can do a screenshot and it does, it automatically saves. So this should be in your drive from now on until you delete it and it'll keep there the whole time and it'll update as people up, um, like uh, edit right. things in. Well, thank you. So that was so helpful. This is kind of nice. It's what I use with some of my upper level students, not necessarily a Google sheet, but um, for one of my classes, my kids had to do a Google slides document. They shared it with me and that was kind of how they started their AP portfolio, just having that picture available and then a small statement about it to keep up with themselves throughout the year. That's a good idea. Also as an attendance sheet, because sometimes what I found really frustrating is that um, we were supposed to keep the regular, the same school schedule remotely as we had in the school day. And teaching high school, all the kids sleep till noon and they're up all night and they don't, you know, they're so not knowing who came into class and having them sign in for attendance is a, is a good idea also. Yeah, and that's something you could just put in the chat so they know like, okay, when I come in, I need to click on the Google Doc and put my name in there so that I account for attendance today. Right, well, we actually had to school-wide create a Google Classroom so that each kid could go in and then fill out the attendance sheet for the school-wide attendance because it was, it was all over the place. So our, our numbers were crazy because people were forgetting to do that. Stephanie, I want to thank you. I have to go. Okay, um, Patricia, we'll be in touch. If you send me your email, um, I'll I put, be it on, I put it on that sheet, but I'll send it also to you in a, um, a separate email. Great. So you said you wanted to do next week for the mindfulness one, right? Yeah, if you want to do that, that's fine. And Perfect. then if you want to do the rolled ones, we could do that another time after other people get a chance. All right. Thank you okay. so much. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Patricia. Thank you, Patricia. Oh, this was great. Steph, I probably also ought, ought to go. I'm going to have to work on this. I made a lot of small areas that, <laughs> that I'm going to have to fill in. So I'll, I'll take a picture when I'm done and email it to you. Yes, everybody, please send me your finished pieces so I can post it, and then uh, other people will be jealous and join us. <laughs> may, I, may I say, uh, just tell the punchline to my story before you all leave? Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes. I just had one more sentence after I was hired and they said they had no art teacher, no art program. They said, write your own curriculum for grades two to 10 and order whatever you want. Wow. How do you like that? <laughs> That'll never happen again, ever. <laughs> but boy, it was nice while it was going on. Yes. What a great experience, Roberta. Yeah. Thank you so yes. much for sharing that. Well, thank you all, and I'm looking forward to seeing you next Friday, next Thursday. Oh, next Thursday. Thursday. <laughs> Eastern time, right? Eastern, Eastern time. time. Okay. New right. York thank time. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good. Stay Bye -bye. safe, to everybody. <laughs> yes, to everybody stay safe. You too. Steph, are you still there? Yeah. Steph? Yep. I want to show you... Oh, there you are. You know, as you do these, you see things in them. Take a look at what I saw in this. I love it. Very nice, Mom. You see the bird? No, I don't see the bird. You're too far away. There's the bird. It looks like um, a, a quail. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm doing <laughs> feathers. <laughs> All right. This was such a success. Renee, you're happily busy. <laughs> you're no, I really enjoyed this. Like everyone else said, the you know I'm a department of one, so I never yeah. get things like this. So I'm excited. I'm glad we're doing it. Be my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Thank you Great. so much. Thank you. See you next week. Bye. Bye.
Hi, I'm Marie Levine, and I missed the very beginning. Oh, I don't know. Hi. Hi, and I'm sorry, my audio, I mean, my visual's not working. Okay. I'm wondering, is um, there a link to the recording of this, or did you record? I recorded the entire thing, um, and once it processes, I will post it on to the Nikata website. Fantastic. Um, yes. uh, Nikata Facebook site, yeah, where, where I originally posted. Oh, I love it. Thank you so very much. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome, and I hope we see you next week. Yes, I, definitely. Great. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. So Luke turned out to be a girl. Yes. <laughs> Is that Kathy who's still with us? Maybe it's just you and me now. Well, there's another screen. I don't know who it is. All right. Well, I'm going to go so I could stop this and it'll process and, and record, process the recording so then I can just post it. All right. Okay. I will talk to you tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's Friday. I have to go to the... Don't say any personal stuff now. It's not relevant. I'm going to end the recording and the session. All right. I love you. Love you too. Oh, that's going to be on the recording. <laughs> All right. Bye. Love you too. Bye-bye. <laughs> this was great.